Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thanks for being here after such a nice um, lunch break. Um, I'm Donald Gunn of the Gunn Report, and the topic assigned to me for this afternoon um, is the effectiveness of creativity. Now, I won't assume that um, everybody in the room knows exactly what the Gunn Report is, um, let alone has heard of it. Um, so just to recap, it's based on a, a very simple idea. We um, combine the winner's lists from all of the top award shows in the world. These shows are global, um, regional, and national. National in the 18 most important markets in the world. And um, the shows are for film, uh, print out of home, digital, and all guns blazing. All Guns Blazing, by the way, is our name for what the award shows variously call um, non-traditional, innovative, um, avant-garde, titanium, etc. And it is th by this process, we establish the annual league tables uh, worldwide for the advertising industry, and the different tables are there on the slide. Now, <clears throat> adding up award show winners for a living may seem like a fairly frivolous endeavor, but um, we like to think that it has um, a serious underpinning. A serious underpinning, hence our title, The Effectiveness of Creativity, um, and also ADC Europe um, obviously think this as well um, because they've asked me to talk today, first of all, about the IPA gun study. Um, the IPA is the Institute of, Institute of Practitioners in Advertising, in other words, the Agencies Association in the UK. And um, um, there are those who would think that the IPA Effectiveness Awards um, is kind of the gold standard of FE awards anywhere in the world. And a couple of years ago, the IPA approached us with an idea uh, of combining combining the IPA Effectiveness Awards data bank with the Gun Report Creative Awards data bank. And um, the universe would be all the IPA effectiveness cases since 1996, um, a total of 545 cases. And the study was carried out for the IPA by the uh, well-respected consultant Peter Field. So the basis of the study was going to be to compare the IPA effectiveness cases, which were not also creatively awarded at a higher level, to those that were one for effectiveness and also one for creativity. And the IPA has got um, a metric which is called ESOV, extra share of voice, and uh, there have been measuring things with this metric since um, 1996, and across the totality of um, 545 cases over this 18-year period, um, <coughs> it was established that on average, 10 points of extra share of voice, in other words, advertising spending, um, on average resulted in 1.3 extra points of market share. Um, now, with effectiveness cases that were not creatively awarded as well, um, it wasn't quite so good. It was 0.8 um, points of extra market share, not quite so good, but 0.8 extra market share is still a decent business result. Um, with the effectiveness cases that were um, creatively awarded at top level, gun report level, um, it actually turned out to be 5.4 points of extra market share. So 
uh, those that were awarded creatively at a top level as well were seven times more efficient and delivered a seven times better return on media investment. Um, then they did another breakdown of the universe um, in terms of um, four quartiles, in terms of two factors combined. Um, one being hard business results and the other being media investment. So if you look at this slide here, the top um, quartile combined highest business, high business results, success, with modest media spending, and these had an average gun report tally of 10.2 major awards. The bottom right quarter, the, sorry, I'll go back there. The bottom number four, um, these were the bad guys. They combined modest business success with a relatively high media spending, and these had an average gun report points tally of 0.2. But the, um, the clincher um, came when we um, broke down the universe into another two groups to, com to compare um, pre-2004 to 2004 to 2014. And um, this showed that the non-award case, with the non-awarded cases, the Pre-2004 score had been 1.3 points of extra market share. That went down uh, rather seriously to 0.5. However, those that had been creatively awarded as well, um, it didn't uh, go down. In fact, it almost doubled. Um, not down, but up. So this would suggest that um, to d things have changed today and the imperative for creativity seems to be four times more. Um, the average uh, leverage of superior creativity has increased fourfold. And I guess in short, and this is really important, two things seem to be happening at the same time. Um, if you look at the top line, ads that are strategically, strategically accurate with a, but with a tendency to be boring are finding it harder to deliver commercially. Um, whereas, if you look at the... Um, Second line, ads that uh, people like and would like to see again and would talk to their friends about are not just working as well as ever, but actually faster and better. And this, of course, is thanks to sharing and connect connectivity and the internet. So not only are, are the ads that have uh, got creative power behind them working better, but uh, this is getting, the process is accelerating. Now, there's a section on our website which is called uh, Bullets from Gun, Bullets from Gun. And this is a collection of rapid, mini, uh, rapid fire mini cases highlighting the business results of the most famous campaigns of our day and age from all around the world. Um, and th these demonstrate, in fact, that virtually all, uh, I'll say it again, virtually all of the work that our industry admires and applauds and awards the most is also highly successful for the clients in the marketplace. Um, there are over 200 mini cases, mini case studies from 2007 to 2015, and we add 32 new bullets in July uh, each year. And um, here, for instance, are some of the bullets that we added um, this July. This is a story from Australia. It's for radiant detergent. Um, and it was a four-stage process. Clothes were bought. These same clothes were tortured in extreme ways, like paintball or pottery. They were washed with radiant. They were returned to the stores where they'd been bought. And 14 spy cameras chronicled the process and sourced the ad campaign. Um, radiant household penetration was up 6.2%. Um, sales were up 27%. Uh, this is a detergent after being nearly delisted. Um, it became the fastest growing laundry brand in Australia. Um, this is also from Australia. And it um, is based on a song that was written and made famous by the singer Chrissy Amphlett, who uh, died um, because of breast cancer. And it brought together 
uh, 10 of Australia's top female singers to create a moving video. Within two weeks, 47% of Australian women had seen this video, 250,000 visited the website, the average dwell time on the website was seven minutes, and 86% used the self-examination information. Now, um, I don't know who remembers this uh, little penguin, because this is Monty. He's um, from the UK, and this was the John Lewis uh, department store's Christmas ad. Christmas, by the way, accounts for 40% um, just the Christmas um, period of, of two to three weeks, 40% of John Lewis's uh, annual sales. And uh, Christmas advertising in the UK is a bit like the Super Bowl. Everyone tries to do something special. Um, and with Monty the Penguin, the thoughtful gifting strategy was continued. Sales were up 5.8% versus Christmas um, the year before, which was the previous record. And uh, they got 29 million YouTube and Facebook views. This is from the USA and it's for Under Armour, um, which is the rising star in the US sports apparel market. And this brand had an uber masculine image. So that this campaign featuring here uh, Giselle Bunchen created a live web experience celebrating women, defying expectations and ignoring outside judgments Style and empowerment scores for the brand were up 900% and sales for women were up 28%. Um, this is um, a very um, uh, important story. It's, um, the advertiser is Reprieve, the Foundation for Fundamental Rights. And the advertising is called Not a Bug Splat because drone missile operators, those who operate um, the drones that um, fire missiles on Pakistan, um, call civilian casualties bug splats. And so a 90 by 60 foot poster of a child victim, um, which the operators in Colorado or wherever, thousands of miles away, saw on their screens, um, was installed on the ground in a heavily bombed area of northwest Pakistan. The campaign went viral overnight. There were 3.5 billion impressions in the news um, and 62 million impressions on Twitter. Um, the operator's morale plummeted. The US government was forced to um, impose new deadlines, new guidelines. The number of drone strikes went down and civilian and child deaths reduced to almost zero. Now, um, who uh, remembers the ice bucket challenge uh, in the middle of last summer? Uh, yeah, and um, did you do it as well? No, anyone who did it? Well, a lot of people, oh good, a lot of people did anyway. Um, this dared folks to dump a bucket of ice water over their heads, um, then to post a video on Facebook, um, tag friends to do the same, and donate to ALS uh, found, uh, Foundation. <laughs> people from 159 different countries uh, participated in this. There were 17 million videos created um, in July, August last year, ALS received 98.2 million in donations, 98.2 million comparing to 2.7 million the same period the year before. Um, this is uh, done by um, a campaign by Ogilvy in London called Visit Britain. Um, and Britain ranked 14th, 14th on the list of uh, 50 countries that the Chinese aspire to visit. And as you probably know from Barcelona, um, they're very important tourists these days. So the campaign had a very interesting idea based on the insight that the Chinese people love to make nicknames for things, for people and places. Um, and so they invited the, um, the Chinese people to coin their own names for famous British landmarks around the country. Um, um, 2.25 million people visited the campaign pages. Um, there were 13,000 Chinese names coined, and Great Britain had a 27% increase in visits from China. Uh, right, this is Mom's demand action for gun sense in America. And um, this campaign, uh, Mom's demand action, MDA, uh, asked top retailers to disallow the carrying of loaded guns 
in their stores, which is not an unreasonable request. The largest grocery chain in America, Kroger, um, declined to do this. Um, so MDA ran ads like the one you're looking at there on the screen. They got, they got MDA got 360,000 petition, petition signatures plus 120,000 new members, whereas Kroger got um, 16,000 complaint calls and lost um, $250,000 in revenue. Ah, our next and uh, second last little example here actually comes from um, Barcelona, from Teatro Neue, and um, it was the Pay Per Laugh campaign. And each seat in this um, theater was uh, equipped with a facial recognition system. Um, you pay per laugh to a maximum of 80 laughs or 24 euros. The average performance uh, take went up to seven, uh, 7,200 euros versus 4,000 before, so nearly double. And the media stories uh, led to a 35% increase in audiences. Uh, and this is the Grand Prix for good at Cannes this year, and it's for Whisper Sanitary Towns towels in uh, India, and the campaign confronted deep-rooted period taboos like not touching pickles when you have your period. Um, pickles are a daily Indian meal condiment, um, and you shouldn't touch them because the um, uh, prejudice was that it would make them rot. Um, this created a national conversation. Um, 2.9 million women pledged to touch the pickle and whispers, whispers a share of uh, voice in the category went from 21% to 91%. Um, so, yeah, it seems with um, bullets, by the way, I'll go back one slide, that, um, I'll go back another slide. Yeah, it seems to be a case of um, see it here first uh, because um, I'll predict that nearly all of these bullets we looked at and all of the 32 new bullets that we added will be winners in the um, national and regional EFI shows um, of late this year and spring 2016. As a matter of fact, um, of this year, 2015's 14 Cannes Creative Effectiveness winners, uh, eight of them, um, in winners in Cannes in 2015, were added to bullets uh, from Gun this time the year before. Anyway, this is a slide that I uh, went back on, and it says, all guns blazing. And remember, I kind of defined that a bit uh, as the things that um, non-traditional, avant-garde, innovative. Um, it also takes in the top winners in categories like branded content and entertainment, promo and activation, PR, direct, and importantly, ambient um, outdoor. And one of the biggest joys of the last eight years or so, working on this gun report thing for all of you, has been the rise and rise of all guns blazing. Um, and there seem to be two main tendencies of work in all guns blazing. The first one is obviously technology and digital led. Uh, the second one is out of home installations, happenings, experiments, um, and stunts, sometimes involving a hoax to add spice. And typically of this uh, second lot, um, and we've got a, a show on our, our website at the moment called Happenings, Hoaxes and Stunts. Um, this second lot are breakthrough creative achievements that on, not only captivate crowds, but engender social media buzz and sharing and are often a hot item on local and even international news. Sometimes these ideas, and we'll see a few, involve going somewhere that no one has been before, and the best of these ideas intrinsically are kind of newsworthy, um, uh, and not even you know, the great campaigns of the past, like Heineken and Hamlet, got free time on the nine o'clock news. Here's a few examples. Um, imagine. Liverpool Street Station in London on a gray January morning. Suddenly the tannoy system in the station is hijacked for three minutes of great dance music. Um, 300 dancers in normal clothes who have been planted around the concourse create a flash mob, mob happening. 
uh, and to start dancing. Commuters, um, you know, traveling to work, use their mobile phones, of course, to share it, as in life is sharing, um, through calls and texts and photographs and videos, and then join in the dancing. And it was all filmed on 10 hidden cameras um, to source uh, T-Mobile's online and offline uh, advertising for months to come. And also a bonanza of free media coverage, um, which actually more than doubled the advertising budget. And T-Mobile sales grew in 2009 by 52% in the height of a recession. Ah, yeah, a few weeks before Tunisia's first free elections in 23 years, the polls revealed that only 55% of the people at best were planning to vote. So a happening was created. The deposed dictator Ben Ali's giant poster was put back uh, overnight in La Goulette, uh, a famous square in Tunis, and the morning crowds were outraged and, and shook their fists and honked their horns. And finally, the women incited the, incited the men to tear down the poster. Underneath it, there was a second poster which said, um, beware, dictatorship can return on October the 23rd vote. And this was all filmed um, and repeated and repeated on TV channels for the rest of the day, not just in Tunisia, but in the whole Arab world. 88%, um, not 55% of voters turned out, and um, dictator ben, ben Ali did not return. <laughs> this shows um, a lake in um, Buenos Aires, and it brought the reality of the terrible floods that, were event that had affected the north of the country to the capital city. Overnight, a house is submerged in a lake in downtown Buenos Aires near the planetarium, and the sign reads, uh, the north of Argentina needs our help. Thousands of people passed it next morning on their way to work. The entire country um, learned about it that day over TV news shows, radio, and newspaper photographs, and uh, donations uh, um, flooded in. Um, moving up to Brazil, and I think everyone probably knows the story. Um, it's for Dove. And um, the top forensic um, FBI artist, Jules Zamora, um, Zamora, Z-A-M-O-R-A, was hired to sketch seven different women, and he did two sketches of each. The first was based on her own description of herself. The second was based on a description given uh, by another person, the woman had just met. Um, and when shown both sketches, each woman discovers she's more beautiful than she thought. Um, this film um, um, recording the, the experiment went viral in April 2013, and by the time of Cannes, it had been viewed 114 million times, actually to surpass Evian Roller Babies as the most viewed um, video, viral video. Uh, this is always, always, there's also a sanitary towel, it's also from Procter & Gamble, um, it's probably the same product as Whisper, just a different brand name in different countries. Um, the campaign is called Hashtag Like a Girl. And this uh, consists of a film of a social experiment asking um, in the studio adults and young girls to do things per the sort of playground insult, like a girl. Um, this got 85 million views in 150 countries. It was the most viral video in the world by its second week, and it became the most watched video in the history of Procter & Gamble communications. From Europe here, from Rom Romania, um, the Rom candy bar had been um, wrapped up in packaging based on the Romanian flag since 1964, and then it was the only chocolate bar on the market, but sales were falling. Um, overnight, the wrapper was replaced with the American flag instead of the uh, Romanian flag. This stunt and headlines like, patriotism won't feed you, caused a national furore um, and media frenzy, and flash mobs gathered to protest. So after seven days, the scam was confessed to, the previous packaging was returned to the shelves, Rom overtook Snickers to become um, Romania's top selling candy bar again, with a 79% sales increase. Oh yeah, um, Carlsberg, Belgium. 
a movie theater in Belgium um, for this uh, stunt is packed with 148 hairy bikers. Um, and just the odd pairs of seats remain here and there in the auditorium. Um, innocent couples, not knowing what they're going to uh, confront, uh, turn up for the show. Most of them flee in horror. Um, but those brave couples who take their seats are applauded by the bikers. Um, they're given Carlsbergs to drink by the bikers. And that calls for a Carlsberg scrolls up on the cinema screen, filled with hidden cameras, um, resultant media coverage, and YouTube views created over 150 million free contacts. Um, Yekaterinburg is the fourth city in Russia, and it had a chronic potholes problem, holes in the roads. Um, the politicians were ignoring it. URA.ru is an online um, magazine in the city, and it organized, this is a guerrilla uh, tactic, for caricatures of the governor and the mayor and the deputy mayor to be graffitied around the potholes overnight. So a huge and a gleeful media buzz ensued, not just in Yekaterinburg, but all across Russia. And in fact, um, 1.4 kilometers of road had been repaired in the month before the action, and that went up to 7.6 kilometers in the month after. Here we have um, a famous brilliant Brazilian billionaire called Chiqui Scarpa, and he announced via Facebook he, he was going to bury his uh, $500,000 Bentley, um, inspired by the fact that the pharaohs used to bury things with themselves. Um, the ensuing coverage, um, I mean, Brazil was outraged. And in fact, so was the world. This was carried in new channels everywhere. The ensuing coverage culminated in the whole country's media um, descending and in attendance on burial day, and he stopped the burial for the campaign reveal that the Bentley would actually stay above ground, but that many more valuable things are being buried every day, viz. organs that could save, look, save lives. Um, and organ donation in Brazil increased by 31.5% in just one month. And I'll just squeeze in one more, uh, and it's from Colombia. Um, yeah, well, basically, it's been 60 years since it all started, this civil war, and there's s still about 6,000 um, FARC guerrillas still remaining in the jungles in Colombia. And the agency Low SSP-3 had the idea, and army special units implemented it, and big trees on 10 strategic guerrilla um, routes through the jungle were dressed with Christmas lights. And when guerrillas approached, movement sensors caused the trees to light up like Christmas trees. And a banner proclaimed, Christmas can come to the jungle, you can come home. Demobilize, everything is possible at Christmas. Um, 331 guerrillas uh, demobilized as a result. And this made the news and talk shows everywhere in South and North America. So um, I haven't seen any signs saying five minutes. What does that say? Five minutes. Perfect. You're going to be really pleased with me. To sum up, the function of life of the gun report is to identify the best new work in the world each year, to identify who's doing it, to celebrate both in our yearly report, um, and to keep the work and the information alive for posterity on our website. So in addition to that, we want to be known for two more things. Our enthusiasm, which I may have um, demonstrated, for all guns blazing, and our championship, to come back to our title of our presentation, of effectiveness. And if things like the IPA gun study and bullets from gun are a help to you in, in tranquilizing creative skeptic colleagues and clients, then we'd be more than happy. Um, also, you know, we've got a wonderful day and a half still ahead of us. And when we applaud the winners um, as they come on the stage tomorrow night, let's do so recognizing that they are not the only winners of the evening. The other winners, in fact, the biggest winners of all, the biggest winners of all are the products and services, the brands and good causes 
for which this wonderful advertising we'll be celebrating was created. So um, enjoy the rest of the ADC Festival 2015. I certainly intend to. Anyone who wants to have a chat after it, I'd love to. If you have some comments um, or criticism or uh, questions on this presentation, um, in the meantime, thank you very much for your kind attention.